one of the two beautiful hosts of Unplanned Trek. The other one I'm joined, who has his in his biography as <laughs> lifetime accomplishments, beating Isaac at the Trexperts quiz. It's Andrew Hogan. Yes, that is pretty much why I'm here to yeah. beat you. Yes, <laughs> everything. Have you had a good week? Well, yeah, I'll tell you what I'm not beating. I'm not beating this DVD player. No, I'll let you do that while I talk to other people. How about you that? You do that. We've got some other people yeah. good, eh? We are joined by someone else who has in their life accomplishments beating Isaac at the Trexperts quiz. It's Jack Dorino from Let's Talk About hey. Treks. Hey, it's Jack Dorino from Let's Talk About Treks. Hi, it's good to see everyone. Great to be back. Sorry for beating you in the Trexperts quiz. You Sorry weren't so really beat me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even get sympathy points. In fact, I might have, and I still lost. Oh, I, found, I found the subtitles. Thank you. And we're also joined by Star Trek alum. We've got Olivia Youngers joining us live from a holodeck. How are you, Olivia? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Now, for, for those who don't know, which is, of course, nobody, mm, tell us we've got tell who, who were you on Star Trek and which Star Trek <laughs> were you on? Uh, I played Ensign Briggs on the, uh, the last season of Star Trek Picard, season three. You did indeed. I knew that. Yeah, how's that nap going? <laughs> it's uh, it's 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 a very prolonged nap. You know? <laughs> it seems that way. It's, it um... reminds me of this episode, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you mean with bit. us, or do you mean the one we're watching? Oh no, the bit. one we're watching. <laughs> Hearing it's a pain. A... <laughs> I the house. I do. I have proof. I have a. a signature from Metallus saying that I am still alive. So <laughs> oh, just cool. sleeping. See, um, this is the you problem. You, you, you shouldn't have to get documented proof that you're still alive. But if you're going to, <laughs> Terry Metallus is a good person to get it from. Well, it's because yeah. Terry Metallus keeps killing everybody. <laughs> he's, he's caused his own yeah. he's caused his own problem, you see. <laughs> true. I'd true. Be, if I was a showrunner, I wouldn't kill anyone. <laughs> Because you're too nice. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm a bloody nice guy. And it wouldn't be a drama. <laughs> no, it'd be a comedy. <laughs> and there would be a beanbag <laughs> on the roof. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, Olivia, do you have any active NDAs that you're not allowed to tell us about at the moment? Uh, not at okay. the moment. Uh, not at the moment. Um, potentially, but not at the moment. But that's not a clue. <laughs> I mean, it's not a hard no. It's not a hard. Well, it's, it's a no, not yet. Yeah, which is a maybe, which is a probably, which is a yes. yes. Yeah, got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it Welcome okay. to the Australian legal system. <laughs> <laughs> We're a couple of minutes away from watching Waking Moments from Voyager. Do does anyone on on this call remember this episode? I do. Mm -hmm. Um, I do. Although I'm a little sad. I mean, I realize it's not quite in the theme. I actually really love the one that comes right before this, Mortal Coil. I think it's such a great episode, personally. I find oh, it really yes. interesting. Um, so I remember this one. So this one, you know, when I think about the show and, and uh, in the lineup, I, I feel like it's a little bit of a step down from that one. That one was such an interesting episode, especially because Neelix uh, had been treated like kind of just the comic relief for so long. And that was a really fantastic episode kind of showcasing his talents. So um, this one was this one was a little weird, <laughs> you know. Um, but I do remember the dreams within the dreams and the the moon and the tapping of the hand and all of that. So yes. Get, yeah, oh, this is good. the episode where Chakotay does frame of mind from TNG. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It yeah, pretty much is, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. well, There's gonna be well, a little bit of double ups, doesn't there? When you said this one at first, I was like, how does this qualify for the theme? And then I remembered, well, some people have some like I yeah. guess sexy-ish dreams right yeah so. what, some yeah. people have them just sometimes <laughs> we did an episode recently of enterprise which was really dark and you know uh, the crew were stealing parts from a different race but the only bit that was sexy was to paul had a dream that was the only bit mm. that made it qualify for our project really i because like when i think of which series may have that like i feel like enterprise actually ends up in the the one with the most yeah there's a lot of you know just because of all of the the decontamination yeah bits. exactly <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's where it was it was always going there wasn't it yeah, and and the fact that half the that half the crew spent half the time running around in their undies and shit that's right yeah. yeah i think my the top 10 on this list might all be enterprise mm. it's not i remember what like, i don't need to see i don't <laughs> need to see connor Trenier's boxer shorts that badly again again yeah. ever again yeah. actually yeah. i think it's yeah. the word we're looking for anyway got this thing worked out. yeah excellent well are you guys ready to press play um, oh, let me pull it up. Yes, I have it in another tab. Now, if you guys are um, watching it via Paramount, I believe over there you have an ad first. So we'll wait for you to get through that before we press play our end too. 
I've got mine loaded up through uh Yeah, mine's Amazon. right here on the ship on approach. So yep. oh, okay, I'm still cool. I'm still on the menu screen. <laughs> <laughs> Tittle down. <Yeah. laughs> we'll, we'll give a five click little... countdown. Hello. That's okay. okay I have ADHD, ship. so I am one of those people who has about a hundred tabs open at What's any you do? Time. Yeah. <laughs> but it makes it hang on, we got Harry. Can you rewind it and we'll all press play at the same time? Okay. It don't want to do that. Oh, yes, yeah. it does. All right. So I'll give a five second countdown. We'll press play in five, oh, fuck it. four, three, <laughs> two, one. Okay. I think we're, we're probably a little bit ahead, but that's all right. We're about like 17 hours ahead of these two. Oh, we are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right off the you bat. Like, you're actually. Time traveling by hanging out with us, I guess. That's right. We are, or maybe we're the ones time traveling by hanging out with you. But we're not allowed to tell you how how yesterday <sighs> ends. The real problem we have. Oh man, we start out with this, don't we? Yeah. Yeah, we got yeah. Right. yeah we get right to it. We're seventeen hours ahead, but forty years behind in Tasmania. <laughs> that's that's about true. That's the problem. The aspect ratio is wrong on this too. That's okay. I don't know. That's going to bug I me. I love Tim Good. Russ so much. He's he's a bit of a dude, isn't he? He's so great. Have you heard him sing? Yeah, he's yeah. No. He's really good. Thanks. Oh. How's it going? And so Paris is saying it's going really well because I've got the only seat on wheels in all of Star Trek. Oh, and is Tuvok walking naked around the Oh, of course he is. He is he's pants yeah. on. Yeah. Doesn't seem too bothered by that. No one else <laughs> seems all that bothered by it either. Yeah, that's it's probably even weird. Man. That's actually weirder. Yeah. Also, <laughs> just kind of keep moving on, you know. Yeah, it's fine. They're oh, sort of used to it. Two, two of us got the tackle out again, and everyone and everyone, and everyone's just walking around going, "Oh, geez, again." <laughs> Third time this week. Yeah, one far was last week. Yeah, one one far every week. One <laughs> far far away. <laughs> What are these two going on about? I don't know, but I think Kim's blushing. You're still an ensign, dude. <laughs> Might not be after this scene. Oh, he'll, he'll be less than that. <laughs> Cadet. With Lucano. Yes. Nick. Yeah. Oh. Is this the sexy bit? It's one of them. This is yeah. one of the sexy yeah, bits. Mm. Definitely a mourn hub moment. Yeah. Apparently resistance was futile there. Consoles are blowing up. Now, we don't know what's caused this yet, but this could potentially be a fight. It's um... Now, my question is, whose dream is this? Is this Car Kim's dream or Seven's dream? It's it's Harry's dream. Or, yeah, or is it another Seven combined dream? dream? No, is it, 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 aren't they all in a shared dream universe? Yeah. Like Sandman? Eventually, but I think they have yeah. like their own independent dreams at first. It's a bit sort of Neil Gaiman-ish, isn't it? Oh, yeah. We've got a bit of food in the background there. What have we got? Some lettuce? That's a kebab. Is it? Kebab. Oh, I was looking above the kebab. That's yeah. no kebabs. Dude, how do you miss the kebab? I was looking at the green. Because it's not four o'clock on a Sunday morning after you've been out on a Saturday <laughs> night. <laughs> oh. Whoa. How good is the kebab when you're hungover? It's great. Oh, okay. They look a bit fucked. Yeah. Speaking of which, it's burnt one. Oh, a uh, different spot. Nice shot of the whole crew. Yeah. I'll tell you what he didn't forget. He didn't forget to shave. <laughs> he shaved down. He could he could be in the Olympics swimming. Uh, hmm? Yep. It is an Olympic year. Yep. See, that's oh, why I don't God. think they're in the shared dream yet, because they're they're clearly all having their own experiences right now. Oh, yeah. And I guess, you know, we just saw Janeway in in the mess hall and yeah. Right. Ooh. So a not quite Cardassian we've got there. He had a funny tooth coming out of his chin. Hmm. You can get a cream for that or something. Yeah, it's not really well worked out, mate. Stick to the eyes. Okay, thanks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. Mate, he's outside the ship. He can't be outside the ship. I like it. Whoa, here we go. Is he going to watch this? Are these two still going? Yeah. Oh, my God. No, man, there's no way Harry's gone that long. <laughs> <laughs> That's harsh. And now he wakes up and finds this guy. Oh geez, I was pashing you. Yeah. yeah, I'd be I'd be upset too. I'd want to have about 50 showers. If you were who? All of them. Right. 
Well, they're all waking up. I'll tell you what, this is a good way to compare all of their pyjamas. Oh, <laughs> that's exactly what I was thinking. Two Fox yeah. were nice. Two Fox wasn't wearing Two Fox are bad. When you wake up, he was. Yeah. When he woke up, he was wearing something. There's a really great scene in this toward the end where everybody sort of like comes together in one room and showcases all of their sleepwear. It's oh, it's pretty nice. pretty great. And this and that's sort of somewhat ironic because you know if you go back to say Star Trek the motion picture they were all wearing pajamas the whole the whole movie. Right, they started out in sleepwear. Oh, they did leisure wear. I like to think of it as. Mm. I do miss the way they would design the clothes that people would wear and like you know like they really modernized the the off oh, the yeah. outfits for the more recent shows and i kind of miss that like just the, the weird styles they picked this is really obvious that olivia in um the early seasons of next generation where uh -huh. it just seemed as though anytime any of the crew were off duty they had to be in some completely whacked out stupid clothes i know i, I love it yeah. it's fantastic bring that <laughs> back like, but I mean, we talked about this the other week. It yeah. doesn't matter. Five hundred years from now, jeans and a t-shirt are still going to be cool when you're not at work. Like, there's no that's not going to change because it's easy. You know, this t-shirt I found it on the floor today. I'll put it on. Easy, done, sorted. It's true. Yeah, it's clean. <laughs> I think the floor. Well, the floor's pretty clean. <laughs> when my son comes out and he goes, "Dad, could I borrow a t-shirt?" I went, "Why? Because all mine smell." Mm. Fantastic. That's great. Um, but you're right. Why can't, why did people in the future, Bring why did Riker, Riker always had his. So Riker wore like a ceremonial thing on an outfit, but instead of sash, it was just skin. And he didn't do any buttons up at all. Yeah, that's right. Ah. All right, doorbell. Yeah, both Picard and Riker were really good at rocking the deep V. Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> Bring that back. Come yeah. On. Um, we're all thinking of Angel One, right? Tom's got we're a nice, there. Tom's got a nice dressing gown. He does. Yeah. Oh, and here's another thing. Oh, he's not living with Bellana yet. No, this is season four. Yeah. Why yeah. did Why did Bellana get the only uniform with a breast pocket so she could put some pens and pencils in it? I think it was to cover up a pregnancy. Yeah. This it, might be correct. Yeah. Yeah. This, is like, seemed... this is like Mariska Hargitay's coat. Oh, yes, of course. that The most famous coat of law and order. Um, but the thing <laughs> is, it's very practical, you know. Mm. Like, it uh, is. When you're she, at can, work, she can take three tools with her. Yeah. Uh, Neelix skin. <laughs> how often? How often do they use pens and pencils? Really, though. Yeah. Oh, of them. I'm assuming. You know? Well, I mean, she's she's got some calipers and a compass. It looks yeah. like you know, she's got one of those. Do some star charting. What are those music things that you ding and then you can a, have a tuning fork? It looks like she's oh, like a tuning fork. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that could come in handy. That that would work. They, well she's got to tune the warp coils. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Well, yeah. Last week we had a in in what we watched we had a we had a like a strip club at the at the, by the warp core. A, right. a training fork would come in handy for that to know if why you, you well if you were playing with A major or A minor. So you've gone to a strip club and all you <laughs> can think that. of is you picked a different note. All you can think of is having a tuning fork. Yes, that's terrible. I'm never going to one with you again. Again, I right, got it. Yeah. yeah. Why are we going to Chile? Uh, it's a compromise. What, in what way is Chile a compromise between what Argentina? Well, what, what, what he'd want to do is something that's like nineteen sixties ah. Americana. Yes, and she'd want to do something Klingon, so they go to Chile instead. That makes no sense. Ex yeah, no. I, love, I love it. Yeah, thank you. I love it. I'm going to have a chip. Oh, oh, there, okay. there we go. And they're going to stop for a coffee as well. So we've got we've got food getting mentioned too. Mm -hmm. Maybe they are living together. Maybe they just have different shifts and didn't sleep at the same time. Oh, is there four shifts or three? Yep. <laughs> Jellico. Yeah. Jellico was a good captain. He did nothing wrong. It was just right <laughs> being too stubborn to, to go to the extra duty shift. Yeah, that it should does... work. You've got a thousand people on board. It, it does seem a weird hill to die on, doesn't it? Yeah. Yep. I he, mean, he it's never really option. been a great management style to come in and start at an organization and completely change the, the structure of their work. Yeah, yeah, that's usually not yeah. good. People tend to not yeah. like that. Yeah, right. true. You could just roll with it. We, they do have the the pyramid structure, you know. You got to do what you're supposed yeah. to. Oh, no one ever does. Mm. Yeah, true. Like, if, there's a lot of maverick on board there, bro. Bob, what about when when Data wanted to save the exocomps and just yeah, survey just every it. order? Yeah. yeah, Spock kidnaps the Enterprise. But if he if he had have respected what he should have been done, we wouldn't have been given the exocomp in lower decks. Mm. Peanut hamper. 
Peanut Hamper is the best. Yeah. yeah. Do you love Peanut Hamper? Yeah. Oh, I hate Peanut Hamper. <laughs> Why? Why? Peanut Hamper is great. I love Peanut Hamper because you don't hate it. Yeah. <laughs> and Tom and Harry are both late. They're probably sleeping in. <laughs> Where can they go? They're on Voyagers. <laughs> well, I don't think the Delaney sisters are here anymore. We don't hear about them anymore. So I, I can't think of what they would be doing. I don't think they existed. No, they no. pop up because don't they show up again or get mentioned for Chaotica later on? Oh, well, they get mentioned. Oh. Oh, I don't I'm know. I'm pretty sure that one of them is in the Chaotica episode. Oh, well, I didn't think we ever like, saw them. I think that's the only time. I hope so. I think. Oh. It might be a Delaney sister. I could be misremembering. Mm. Say it confidently and we'll back you up 100%. Yeah. <laughs> well, you've literally been in more Star Trek. You've yeah, been true. in one more Star Trek show than I've been in. Mm. Mm. Like, yes, they were in. They were the twin mistresses of evil in uh, the Chaotic episode. I just checked. I was like, I'm pretty sure that's the only time we really see them. I would have believed you anyway, but thanks. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah. Oh, yeah, they're gorgeous too. They have a great costume. Sorry, I love the Proton. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah, the best. They are. In fact, that that should be a spin-off series. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I saw I somebody, play play I saw somebody on Twitter did a fantastic cosplay. Yeah, really. In, as in black and white. As who? Um, as Chaotica. So oh, as, oh no, as sorry, as um Arachnia. Arachnia. Yeah. yeah. Arachnia, yeah. queen of the spider people. Yeah. Spray painted so herself grey mm. and it looked really good. I like the death robot that's just like <laughs> modern <laughs> aluminium or aluminum. Yeah, I just love that Tom Paris is a huge, huge geek. He's just a huge geek. Mm. Yeah. They he start is, off yeah. thinking he's like the bad boy character. He's not. He's the yeah. he's the nerdy, geeky. He'd be he going to conventions a, wearing costumes. He builds a he builds a ship, you know. <laughs> <laughs> not even the engineer can do uh, that. Even more importantly, he restores a Ute. Mm. Like, he restores yeah. a pickup truck in the middle of the Delta Quadrant. Mm. Mm. Well, he yeah. shouldn't even know what a pickup truck is, to be honest. Mm. Mm. But anyway. But he still disappoints his Oh, part. this conversation between Jake yeah. and Mark is so great. <laughs> yes. Is this when the turbo lift isn't going at the turbo speed and it's just going at 21st century speed? Yeah. Mm. Yes, getting dressed. Would you like me to demonstrate, Captain? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like they've swapped positions in the lift. What do you mean, continuity error? Yeah. Oh, that never happens in Star Trek. No, true. No. Unless it's like a time travel, Tommy Wimey. Wibbly wobbly Tommy Wimey. Yeah. Yeah. You know, one thing that I think is strange about this episode is so like Harry Kim wakes up screaming, right? Mm. And everyone's basically like really like body shaming this alien when they wake up. Like yeah. everyone's like, oh, it was horrible and ugly. Like, shouldn't they kind of be used to it by now? <laughs> Yeah, I mean they've they like, by this stage. Think, isn't that their okay. whole like purpose? Folk on, find find new people. Instead, everybody's like, "Oh my god, he was so ugly." Yeah, the, there's not there's nothing in the charter about you know liking the, the, the new cultures that they make. <laughs> no, but you, once you've seen and like enough, it shouldn't be shocking, right? And and I this mean, guy was like, this guy was pretty nice compared to the Vidians. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Aren't, aren't yeah. they rough? Yeah, they're not fun to look yeah. at. Yeah, but but it's like they we haven't all seen aliens like you have because you've seen mm. real aliens. Mm, true. <laughs> and the aliens you saw could change their appearance into other things. I mean, we we had Judd Zia chastise Kira about not judging mm. you know, folks by their appearance because she mm. went out with someone who you could see his brain or something, if I'm remembering correctly. Odo. At least she knows he's got no, one. No, not Odo. No, no, no. Jadzia. <laughs> Jadzia had, had had they mention it in some conversation. Oh, know? I thought you meant Kira, sorry. No, 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 yeah. no. Uh, did you see the meme this week about the doctor with Jerry Ryan that says, uh, um, why did they always ship the most attractive person oh, yeah. um, in Voyager with, with Jerry, Jerry Ryan? Ryan. <laughs> Robert. He retweeted it. He Robert loved it. Picardo is an absolutely hilarious guy. Yeah. It's like, fun, fun fact, mm. I introduced Robert Picardo to Sylvester McCoy, who played the seventh Doctor Who. So the oh, Doctor Who the Doctor. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, at a convention in Melbourne at Supernova. They had not met each other. And um, Robert Picardo really wanted to meet another actor who played a character whose only name was the Doctor. Excellent. And I said, we'll come over and meet Sylvester. Yeah. Since he's... That should be... 
nuts. That should be a I mean, panel at Comic Con. They should just well, get yeah. doctors. From well, they different... became they became friends yeah. after that, and they did a they did a stage play in the in, in the UK. Did they stay nice. in contact with you? No, no certainly really. not. No. And Sylvester McCoy <laughs> is A grade nuts. Yeah. I rang him three weeks after that because his agent said. Um, if you ring him at home at breakfast time, he'll talk, he'll talk, he'll talk to you it. about uh, The Hobbit that he was doing at the time. And guess what? He'd signed an NDA. The only thing he couldn't talk about was The Hobbit. So that was a hilariously useful interview. I'm sure it still was a hilarious <laughs> interview, though. Oh, yeah. He told yeah. some really inappropriate stories about behind the scenes of Doctor Who in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, um, oh, this is T- Chikoto's got this the power. Is it the... Um... The Kuchimoye. What? Is that Suki? Yeah. No, you know where he's got the spirit guide? Oh, yeah, pr- probably. jamo has got a coffee, so we, yeah. might, we must have well and truly got through that nebula. Lucid, lucid dreams. Yes. Yeah. We know you'd be able to wake up again. We'd, we'd pour water on your head. <laughs> well, I think we'd better monitor him in, in the medical bay, in sick bay. I wouldn't even. Yeah. No, just let him go. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen it Inception? You just put him off a chair oh, and let people right. wake up. Yeah. And that's Christopher Nolan, so it, 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 it must be true. Well, you'd have to sleep in Paris's chair because that one you can slide around everywhere around the deck. If I was on that, if I was in that chair, I would piss fart around the whole time. He's I'm sitting gonna, on a roller coaster. Yeah, he's sitting, yeah. Like, I would never be sensible on that. I'd be spinning around and going, wee, and that would be ridiculous. It's hard to keep Andrew sitting Still in this chair, and this chair doesn't move. No, it was my couch. <laughs> Chips with her. We'd have couches Chips on on our on our bridge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think they're taking they're heeding my medical advice. You're going to let him sleep in in sick bay. No, hope he doesn't snore. No, he's got like a, he's got like a generation one Walkman or something there. Yeah, or an iPod. It looks like an iPod. It looks like the hollow. Um, what what is it called when he can go off the the hollow emitter? Yeah, wow. that's the one. Well, what's what's he holding? Uh, something spiritual? No, it's an iPod. Oh, <laughs> iPod one looks more like a Game Boy. Yeah. Actually, it's a Game Boy Color. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I've got a Game Boy Color. Maybe it's a Tamagotchi. It's a Tamagotchi. We're playing a really fast game of Tetris. <laughs> <laughs> it is going fast, isn't it? Yeah, but he's, he's not playing it properly. That really makes me angry. Yeah, he's going sideways instead of up and down. Yeah, and, and really he's playing it with his eyes closed because he's a master at it. <laughs> oh look! I can play Tetris with my eyes closed. Yeah. Oh, shut yeah. up! All right, and well, that was quick. Ooh, he's okay. Got a spear. Turned into a spear. That seems unusual. Oh, and there's wildlife on it's the. It's an animal. Oh, okay, done. Sort of. Yeah, but is we don't know what deer? it is yet. Is it a deer? Or... So probably a space deer. Bambi. Mm, space he, Bambi. He's going to kill it. Well, yeah, yeah. So I feel a little code of honorary about this. Oh, about this uh, moment. No, it, it this this whole it was an attempt at the time at introducing diversity, <laughs> but it was not well researched, and it would not no. be something we would consider inclusive. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They they thought they were doing good, but through the lens of twenty twenty three, it's uh it's rough. What if the deer, I'm, concerned, I'm concerned about what if the deer does a poo? Helix would clean it up. No, he wouldn't. It's his fertilizer. Job. It's his job. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's natural it fertilizer a... for the oh, 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 oh. bay. Okay, spear him now. So do I. Spear him now as a shapeshifter. Olivia, no, you can tell us all about them. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen one in real life. Hey, I have quite it's a few. The Star Trek is true, you know. It, it's a documentary. It is, that's right. Yeah. Listen, we're not that far off, honestly. <laughs> no, the truth. Uh, I think bell riots are supposed to happen this year. They are. Um, yeah. 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 Okay. Now they're it certainly feels like we're on the precipice of that, to be honest. Feels like we're close. I love um, this, this conversation. Thanks, to this. They're arguing about who's in control of the dream. No, it's my dream. No, it's my dream. No, I saw it first. It's my dream. Yeah. Get off there. Oh, it's a fight then. Yeah, they're having a fight <laughs> over whose dream is it. It is. <laughs> My dream's better than your dream. Your dream's lame. Mm-hmm. The other thing that's happening this year is the reunification of Ireland with the yes. UK. And yeah. oh, yeah, is that, that going to happen? There's more chance of the bill rights happening <laughs> than that happening. <laughs> you know what we say to that? We say, no. <laughs> that's, the no that, that's, the, that's the Liam Shaw no button, Olivia. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It sounds a little too high pitched for him. It needs to. Oh, be I can go. I, I can go different. No, 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 no. Uh, it's okay. got a lot of them. 
That's a little just too few too many knows. He's very very <laughs> succinct. Very yeah, true. Uh, Captain Shaw. Yeah. That's right. Now we we're, we're pretty sure that if if Star Trek now, came you, that sure for an episode that's all about like you know sexy episodes of Star Trek, I don't mm. know how his race would kiss because look, he's got that like yeah, I know that yeah. little spike thing on his chin that goes up. You can't kiss with that, right? No. That's like that's like having a piercing that goes like straight, uh, like a sharp yeah. piercing out. You can't kiss on the lips with that. <laughs> oh, right. Right. Oh. Yeah. I, I, I thought we were talking about Chicote. I don't know where that's know, going. We didn't know how he could do <laughs> Well, I don't know how he can. I wonder if that little tooth has anything to do with the holes that are like underneath their chin and above their head. What oh, it causes them. God. That's how they carry them around when they're babies. It'd, that would be good to hang your car keys from it. That'd be really good. Not for they're nothing. I really nice. love Mulgar's hair this season. Yeah. Yeah, yeah true. Like, like finally like it just looks like it's hers. It's not mm. a wig. I don't. I don't think it's a wig. No, they spent it's... um a huge amount of the first season experimenting with what would work and what wouldn't, which is quite I weird know. because if you go back and look at shows she was in before, then she had perfectly normal hair. Well, it was like they didn't want her to have short hair, so it ha but it had to be up. So they wanted to give the appear like illusion of it being longer, but up. Yeah, I don't know. It was just weird. It's it like, just, just complicated. And it was kind of like business haircut, mm. wasn't it? Yeah. Like, I'm the very CEO. 80s. Of yeah, yeah, very 80s businesswoman. Yeah. Uh, mm. What about your hair on Picard? That was normal. That was just back in a bun. It wasn't exactly. anything That's crazy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It was just my hair. That's what I'd do if, if I had much hair. True. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, we've, we just had uh, Chicote mention Australia. Which still yeah. exists in the future, yeah. But no one, no one in Australia goes into space. No, you only exists in Australia. You were saying that our um, indigenous culture dreamed up the universe. Um, no, cats, cats dreamed up the universe. Yeah, it, according to Neil Gaiman, in the Dream of a Thousand Cats. I was wondering where you're going. See, people used to dream about <laughs> cats. Used to dream about humans, and then it got reversed, and suddenly we were the people dreaming, and they were the in See, the dream. Kim was just napping. Yeah. He was just napping. It was a deep nap. That's a nice grandpa talk you, he's wearing. Um, Ensign Riggs would have empathy for that. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Understanding and napping. That's what Riggs is doing at the moment. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. See, I what they should that. have done, they should have figured out a way to have someone have a little girl singing in the in this somewhere in one of their dreams, you know, a little night oh. on Elm Street nod. Yes. It would have been great. Mm. Or like creepy twins from creepy the morning. Twin. Yeah. Mm. That was where I was going. Yeah. Yeah. So Seven's invited, <laughs> invited Kim back to the Jeffrey's Tubes. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I've always wanted that. Mm, never happened. Not even in your dreams? No. Who are those people I in the bedroom? Who's that, that person? Yeah. I don't know, but what is she wearing? The Roaring Twenties has called, and they would like their outfit back <laughs> yeah. from this lady. It looks like she's wearing some sort of I was thinking, negligee. I was thinking Golden Girls era of Star Trek. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah it is. Best season of Star Trek. Weird mm. speaking. <laughs> Get up. So we've got some fruit, I think, between um, Neelix and oh. Belana there. Yeah. Maybe oh, some look, space like strawberries. strawberries. Space strawberries. Sleeping Beauty. That's a hilarious joke. Yeah, it is actually. That's amazing. Yeah. I can't believe someone wrote that. Yeah. Mm. That's a Brandon Braga joke if there ever was. Oh, <laughs> you, I thought you were going to dunk on Rick Berman. I thought it was. <laughs> you not dunk on Rick Berman. <laughs> it's, it's been done. It's been done, it's been done too much. <laughs> it has been done. All right. Okay, so, um, and then dreaming about women and. Oh, now they're going to make fun of Tuvok because he's not human. But they didn't see him in the nude. No, but well, no, they're just making fun of what they think his nightmare would be. They have no idea that it would be. Oh, right. The nudity. Unless Jane weighs a blabbermouth and tells everyone. Tells everyone that he got his. Oh, okay. I see. So because they don't know it's nudity, they just go straight and attack his culture. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And that's right. Him for it. That's yeah. cool. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. That, I mean, that's, that's what they do. Show, that's heard. what they do routinely. Okay. Yeah. Explosion happened and everybody had to shake. Yeah. Do you know that must be the most... Oh, hang on. Is we, that a Romulan ship? We've got somebody from Star Trek. We can ask. Yes, exactly. How, how like, is that like, the definitive thing you have to learn if you're ever on Star Trek, Libby, is how to shake when something blows up? Is that That's like true. really important? Yeah. There is a, there is a skill to it. Mm. 
Oh yeah, because if someone because if half the crew shake to the right and the others shake to the left, it just doesn't make sense. No. Isn't that what the song Time Warp's about? Oh, well, it is, that's uh, exactly what the song's about. Yeah. Is it about Star Trek, is it? Rocky Horror. Oh yeah, I know. I know. Oh, he's he's butt face again. <laughs> Butty McButtfacer. I didn't see Neil. Ah. <laughs> um, going back to Jack's point, they um they're making fun of Vulcans under the shade of being a, you know, being kind of jovial and and funny about it. Yeah. So being inclusive with their with their taunts rather than just straight up, you're a Vulcan, you've got pointy ears. Mm. Oh, speaking of right. DVD special features, oh really? I saw it. Yeah, <laughs> ages ago. But I digress. I saw a William Shatner interview once where he was talking about um in Wrath of Khan. They decided to put the entire bridge set on a gimbal, so they could they could tilt it sideways, so that everybody oh, would, so everybody would lean to, mm. the, to to the right direction. And the very first scene they did it, which was the Kobayashi Maru opening scene, mm-hmm. all the television monitors fell out of the wall. Oh no! <laughs> because back then they weren't flat screens; they were CRT screens. And they all... Oh no! <laughs> and, they, and and they decided, nah, back to the old fashioned. Yeah, way. it's going down the line. <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're being rounded up. Do we know the? The Who's alien the... race yet, or any names? Hang on, how many of the aliens are there? Oh, about four or five. Uh, it on. seems not enough. Oh, careful! There's barrels there. Oh, that they, that they can wharf his stuff. Yeah, exactly. If wharf was here, yeah, wharf would get hit in the head. <laughs> it's funny that they round up the whole crew, but the the main seven just seem to be together. Mm. Oh yeah. You only need seven people to drive a starship. I think, yeah, well, hang on. Just, uh, what about what about all, all you need is Beverly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, she can do it by herself, mate. Yeah, if her crazy son traps her in a warp bubble. Oh, he's such a bad son. <laughs> oh, we, we, which one? How many of them are there? <laughs> I mean, she's no she's no Sarek. So Seven's just throwing Kim to the floor for some reason. She, yeah. he, he's no he's just, that, that, this is the old prison Why movie of the diversion. <laughs> yeah, start a fight in the prison cell. I love it. Harry's not very good at playing along. Well, Harry's not no. very good at fighting. Or I don't, even, I don't even want to give that a fight point. That Must, did you notice she chokes him? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah but he probably likes that. I think that happened in the Jeffrey Stew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is still part of the dream. Is it? Mm, yeah. The there. This is this is now when they're having the collective dream. A so. full collective dream. Yeah. Ooh. Did you get that? That's pretty clever, wasn't it? It, was, it oh, doesn't belong yeah. on our pods, mate. No. no. So no. whenever you see our moon, it means it's a dream. Yeah. He's still asleep. Yeah. Oh, and then they grab him so he can't do the little hand tap. Can you get shot in a dream? Yeah, yeah I think you can. I think Harry Kim shot in a dream. I had a dream yeah, last night <laughs> that I was the rhythm guitarist of R.E.M. Were you? Yeah. No, but were you the rhythm guitarist of R.E.M.? Ever? Yeah. Um, it, look, it's was unofficial. Before or before, after Peter Buck? Because he's pretty good. He's the lead. He goes all right. I'm, I'm, oh, the other guy? I'm the other guy. You dreamed you were the other guy in R.E.M.? Yeah, that's right. Fucking loser. <laughs> 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 yeah, I dreamed I was John Entwistle from The Who. <laughs> My guy doesn't even exist, though. They don't have a rhythm guitarist. They've just got that's Peter Buck. They don't. Yeah. Oh, that's worse. <laughs> yeah. That's worse. Come on. I've never had a dream that dumb. I don't think that's true. You just haven't remembered it. Yeah, good point. They've just said 39 hours is almost two days. Wow, thanks, Captain yeah. Matsboy. <laughs> oh, my God. Did, you, did you need a computer to do that? <laughs> He's Technically, some... a, a Captain Arithmetic Boy. Mm. A real... Okay. We're not that posh down here. <laughs> only if my brother is uh he has a master's in, in actual like magic like logic driven math and he constantly talks about how arithmetic is not true math no of course not <laughs> not at all i've got a friend who really struggles with the zero times table so you know like if, <laughs> you've got seven times zero he's like well you've got seven <laughs> like, yeah, yeah like, you, don't, you don't yeah but yeah. but it is hard to explain but you don't. Have you tried to explain the square root of minus one? Well, I, I try to explain it through <laughs> the hearing of, of my bad ear, but mm. it's zero. If oh. you try to amplify it, it's zero. Correct. Yeah. So 
that that's a real world application of it. But I think he just goes, no. <laughs> still, still, I mean, if you make up your mind that the zero times table doesn't exist, it's hard to sway you. What about quadratic trinomials? Well, not on this podcast, mate. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> is that a is that an op- optometrist joke? I don't know. No, yeah. I've been a long time since I did maths. Yeah, I've got more degrees in drugs than maths. Mm. Yes, it's very important. Yeah. Now, are we shouting in this scene? We're a bit, uh, a bit crabby. Yeah. A species that always sleeps won't stay where scans can locate them. Well, I think oh, I was... there's REM. REM are there. Oh my god, <laughs> that's crazy. Well, you don't hold me to it, but I might be the rhythm guitarist of them. You might be. Uh, Say hi to Stipey for me. Yeah, we'll. Yeah, good. Yeah. He listens to the pod. I, I believe yeah. he does. Yeah. There we go. Are the, are the nacelles going to move? No, I don't think we're going to jump to warp. Oh come on! Oh, oh wake up! That, that's me at work. <laughs> that's, me, that's me at work every time. <laughs> yeah. I'm falling asleep. We actually haven't had too much sexiness yet. We've had more sleep. Yeah, I don't I don't think you'll get much more sexiness this episode, actually. I think that was the sum total. Yeah. This is you a get whole... a you get a Bring naked that... Tuvok and a uh a Seven of nine fantasy dream and some Tom mm. and Bolana kissing, but I think that's it. Tom's just like yeah. so slump, like he looks so he peaceful. Look comfy. He's sleeping in a lecture. You do want to kind of give yeah. him a, a rug, don't you? <laughs> and just tuck him in a little bit. This is I... a, this is this is like the Enterprise episode where the, the entire cast were asleep, apart from Malcolm. Enterprise, yeah, Enterprise, yeah, yeah. No, Malcolm was asleep. Oh, Malcolm was asleep and Trip was, yeah, and kind of decided to. Just go around and he's done. in his grudge. Yeah. <laughs> Mind you, two box one upped him on that, hasn't he? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. want to get? You want to get? He went full Connor. He, he, he went, <laughs> yes. Never go full Connor. <laughs> Never go full Connor. We've told you that. <laughs> all right. Okay. So we're all experiencing nightmares. I'm going to experience chips. Hmm. Oh. Kim's trying to interject with his own opinion that might get him a promotion. Yeah, no. But they shut that down pretty quick. Yeah, no. (laughs) (laughs) If Neelix is coming up with the explanation, you're in trouble. Yeah. You're in deep, deep (laughs) doo-doo. Seven's coming over. Harry's blood pressure's gone up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder if this episode was part of the inception of Unimetric 01. Mm. Yeah. I just like the fact that, that they suddenly realised they had someone on the crew who experiences collective consciousness. And they, well, we yeah. ask her. Yeah. We should ask her. No, she wouldn't know. But they're trying to resist what's happening, and that's a futile... Is it futile? Yeah. Oh, I like it. Nice yeah. work. Don't, encar- don't encourage him. <laughs> Jack, you don't encourage him. Jack wrote that and asked me to say it today. Well, I can believe that. <laughs> don't believe you wrote it. Look, it's the nightclub. It's closed. It is too. Ah, the phaser rifle. Oh, the badass. Mm. <laughs> Despite the fact that phasers can can like disintegrate things. They don't very often. Yeah, but they can. Did you get a phaser rifle, Olivia? I did not. I would have. Did, did you get to that. hold one, or even? Um, I there were a lot of things I was playing with um behind the scenes, but I don't. Oh, that yeah. was not one of them. Damn, disappointing. I know, disappointing. Did you get to keep anything? <laughs> did, did you pinch anything? I <laughs> was <laughs> not allowed to keep anything. Mm. No. Mm. Okay, that so is an interesting keep... answer. <laughs> 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 There's no way I wouldn't be flogging shit if I was on if I was on Star Trek. Yeah, I wouldn't be asked back, obviously, but that's fine. I can't act. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know one of my mates was the optometrist on the Mortal Kombat movie that came out a couple of years ago? It was made yeah. in Adelaide, and he pinched a bloody sword <laughs> oh, from fantastic. the armory. Oh, wow, I know because his oh. job was turn up at, at the mornings put contact lenses in all the actors' eyes and then go and do fuck all for eight hours Mm -hmm. and then take them out at the end of the day and go home. Hmm. 
thanks, it, thanks for coming. Ample time to steal a sword. So you yeah. a few thousand bucks. And you know what, guys? No one ever suspects the optometrists. Oh, ever. Know. I mean. <laughs> no one ever expects the optometrists either. <laughs> we're, we're a bit like the Inquisition. <laughs> no one accepts the like optometrists it. either. <laughs> <laughs> But he used to keep sending me, he, he, he texts me photos of him with like Kano's hat and so and so sword and this. And I'm like, I'm just jealous. I hate you. Hmm. I did a real work. I would have tried to take Johnny Cage's sunglasses. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. I'll bag him out for not doing that. And that's that's even work related. Mm. Glasses. I know. Who flies there? <laughs> no one ever established why they made a Mortal Kombat movie in Adelaide. It'd just be tax. It's It'd have to be tax. <laughs> Um, okay. I wonder okay. if the balls got into there. The balls? Yeah, like Rundle Mall balls. Oh, those big, big, yeah. funny balls in the mall? Yeah. They're weird. There's, um, it's art, but there's, you know, in, in like a mall where you might have a statue or some sort of street art to, to pick. Sure. In Adelaide, there's two big shiny balls. They're just, it, they look like yeah. bearings. Yeah. 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 I've been to malls with big hanging balls also before. <laughs> they're just like they're suspended, right? They're just yeah, big I've, hanging balls. These ones are sitting on the ground. Yeah. I've, I've oh. been to malls with, with big hanging balls. I bought them with me. Oh, so y'all just y'all just like sit your balls on the ground. Yeah, yeah. We like oh. to have ours hanging. I can't help it. And hello to anyone from Adelaide <laughs> who's listening today. Does Adelaide exist? Adelaide exists. Tasmania does not exist. Good, okay. Yeah, which is a T-shirt you can buy from the Unplanned Trek store. This is fighting. Oh, it is. This is fighting. Chakoda and the Doctor. This is really Inception. I'm confused. Yeah, it's very Inception-y. Are we, are yeah. we asleep? It's like, yeah. I know, someone needs a spinning top. Someone needs, like, like DiCaprio's little top. You spin the top, and that's how you know if you're asleep or not. Trying to find a DiCaprio joke in there. Chakoda but... is the top. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course he is. <laughs> so, so in that case, so to speak. <laughs> oh dear. See a splash of cold water. Yeah. Like so Georgia. why are they getting Chakoda to do everything when you've got the doctor? I um, right, and he, the doctor's been so useless in in keeping them awake. Yeah. Like he keeps only waking up that one person. Yeah. He can't dream though. So are these people dreaming? Jay yeah, might just take all... her wrist. Literally. But he's he keeps waking up Chakotay. Why not just wake up everybody? If you Yeah. That would seem more efficient. I'd yeah. wake up Naomi Wild. Because this is because this is a Chakotay episode, because they needed a very oh, special right. episode where Chakotay has his magic indigenous person powers because they didn't bother to do any actual research into the, <laughs> the defining quest. who he actually is from which like which actual yeah. culture and just, just they're like, should we do research? Back. Nah, we'll just just keep, rent a deer. Again, and yeah. give him a spear. That'll be good. We'll at the time, that, at that the time, the focus was diversity, not necessarily inclusion, and that's how you end up with episodes like this. Yeah. It's a Works fun idea with the levels of dreams. It's just a uh... look at the look at the matte painting. This is a huge bedroom. <laughs> oh, I thought it was pretty small. He's getting pretty quiet. He doesn't want to wake anyone up. Well, then Jamie's just going to shoot him. Come on, Jamie, do it. Do it the Jamie way. Hey, where did he come from? She's got John McClane vibes. Yes, but she hasn't taken the jacket off and gone That's with true. the thing. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't shoot me. I don't believe you're real. Okay, is anyone Jamie uh, holding one of those phaser rifles? Always just makes me so happy. Yeah, I'm not sure that anyone's real. We've all got like. Phaser rifles. Is he wearing a guitar strap? <laughs> yes. I think he's going to play a bit of bass, or maybe he's the rhythm guitarist. Yes, he's yeah. definitely wearing a guitar strap. Oh, yeah, well, he's no Mike Mills, mate. No, but they kicked you out. Oh, they can't kick me out. Yeah, they kicked you out already. Speaking of which, how's my guitar going? It's good. Yeah, yeah good. It's been treated well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. excellent. Jack X playing. What does Jack like playing on it? He's, he's been playing a bit of Oasis on, on it lately. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. I gave my guitar to his son for some obscure reason. That's now on the record when it was actually just a lend. It's now Jack's guitar. No, I gave it to <laughs> him gave temporarily. It. That's, I, that's what I heard. Oh, <laughs> Jackie boy. Witness. 
Don't get too silly. It's a Rickenbacker. Like, it's a really nice guitar. Yeah. yeah. I can play three chords. Oh. Yep. Guitar George can play three chords. Yeah, but he knows all the fancy. He doesn't need them. No. He's strictly rhythm. <laughs> That's right. He doesn't want to make it. Chords. Just like me. Oh, I know. Yes, <laughs> you are. Yeah. Mm. See, Jack, I, I can play three chords, but I own five guitars. Oh, can you play three of them at a time? Uh, can you play no, all of the chords? I, no, no, three. Three. Three chords. Any any more than that is showing off. And unnecessary. Oh, 100% unnecessary. Yeah. Okay, they found a gener... This is the dampening field. So I think the doctor's really concerned that we might wake everyone up. But hang on. That was the idea. The idea is... This, the idea just to this, move on. This medicine they're using to bring to wake everyone up is called anemazine. Yeah. Oh. I've not heard of that. I, I think they should have called it animatomol. <laughs> and I ate them all. Okay. Um, still think a bucket of water on the head wakes people up. Yeah. Or just like you know, get your favorite song off and play it from my tunes or whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It wakes you up. Yeah. Do you know the funniest drug that I, that, that I ever have to prescribe at work? But is it funny from the reaction you have to it, or the funny because of its name? Because of its name. Okay. No. The, the, then the answer is no. <laughs> okay. The most common anti-inflammatory, the most common anti-inflammatory eye drop that we prescribe in Australia is called FML. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. <laughs> FML. Yeah. And That's you can always, fantastic. You can always tell if, if you prescribe it to like a, you know, a millennial, they just laugh as soon as you give them the prescription. They're like, <laughs> my life is going to fix my red eye. Yeah. Like, yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the problem with the transmitter? What's the transmitter? It's the dampening field. So it's, yeah. And. Oh, so are we trying to fix them so no one's going to disturb them again? Yeah, well, that's... And then like, they'll give us safe passage. All I want to do is sleep. And all we want to do is get home. Mm. Yeah. Ethically. They need some FML. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've mm -hmm. revived the entire crew. Oh, there's a troubling side effect. What? Oh, like it's on you. So? Yeah. Just get up and watch telly. Yeah. Like, watch... if I can't sleep, I get up and watch, like... The Dean Boxing? No, like like Law and Order or something. Oh, or The West Wing, hmm? or old episodes of Mash. I've been watching Heroes lately. Yeah, I know you said hmm. that last week. Hmm. Guess who I saw on Mash the other day? Keiko. Keiko. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and then I saw. Look, we got some apples. We have got your kebab still yeah. at the back. The kebab. Oh, the geez, I think, think there's some onions behind Neelix. He's just blocking them at the moment. Those kebabs would be minging by now. They might be just. Right in the sweet spot. You reckon? Yeah. They've been cooking for about yeah. four days. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> At least. You've, you've got to be hung over, though. You've yeah. got to have a massive hangover. Yeah. Do you have kebabs in America? Uh, yeah. And of course. Yeah. Yeah. Lucky and stuff? Yeah. Because in Australia, it's the standard hangover food. It's either a... Oh. It's, it's either like a, a Zinger burger from KFC or a kebab. I don't think... I mean... I feel like I was having that conversation with my brother about how different cities have like the food that they're known for, although you can get anything mm. in most. Yeah. Um, like it, LA, it's kebabs, the taco scene. Kebabs yeah. are pretty standard food truck fare in New oh, York. Yes. yes. Very, oh, yeah. Man. And they're really good. Mm. Really good. Now Actually, I feel like it's harder to find decent, good, cheap pizza and I just go for the kebabs or. Well, hot dog. this one. We just we we did just gloss over all of the fantastic breakfast outfits they had on, and that everything they were on. they were all in their sleepwear. Yeah. Yeah. And Tuvok had great. um Tuvok had uh, shoulder pads. I didn't <laughs> know. Yeah, his is very very formal and stiff. I don't feel like that would yeah. be good yeah, very much so. But Kim was rocking that deep V. You don't well, yeah. yeah. But you don't sleep in shoulder pads. Mm, two box, two box is actually designed to make sure that he sleeps on his back and not his side, so he doesn't get face wrinkles. That's what it is. So oh, that's it's why a he deterrent. looks. He doesn't look a day under two hundred years old. Also, if you are aware yeah. that your shoulders exist, then yeah. from um from clothing, then you are wearing clothing. So it's a reminder to wear clothes. Are you ever not aware of your shoulders existing? I don't. I I go days without thinking about my shoulders. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
And my sternum. FML. I don't give my sternum much thought at all. Don't? No. 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 What um, about your clavicle? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about it now, mate. Yeah, always, right? <laughs> I know how it is. It's anatomy. Really. Oh yeah, this is too much like work, right? Yeah, we're gonna to get to the ice sooner. Yeah. Well, we'll go. We'll go to our medals to because we've just seen the credits roll this week. We've invited Olivia to do the Picard medal for the three best characters in today's episode. So these characters all get points, which go towards our end of year show where we're revealing who is the the best character of the year. So the points matter, unlike whose line is it anyway? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Olivia, who did who um who struck a chord with you this week? So this one's hard, right? Because like so many, I just feel like this episode too, in particular, people are just uncharacteristically slow on the uptake about things because it's a Chakotay episode. The point is to make him the hero of the episode. He knows what's going on. Like the doctor should have easily been the most useful character in this episode. And because he was so useless in comparison to what his role is on the ship, I can't even bring him up. Yeah. Um, But I don't want to get like... Giving it to Chakotay feels so cheap. So Chakotay's going to get like the third level. Like I'm going to go three, two, one. Chakotay okay. gets number three. Uh, but obviously he's the most useful character in this episode. He's the only one who seems to have any idea of what's going on. And he he gets them out of the pickle. He um, does. Yeah. You know, he has to, he threatens essentially a genocide in order to do it. Right. It's kind of glossed over. Like it's it's a quick genocide if it's, it's a, a quick it's a quick threat yeah. of genocide. Yeah. Um they yeah. get them out of their thing. Uh and then I think I think the other two, and maybe it's just because I'm biased towards them in general, so keep that in mind if anyone gets mad at my picks. But uh I feel like the two that pick up on stuff more quickly and are useful are seven and two buck. Plus yep. two buck has that fun little you find out yes. that Vulcan's nightmare is is showing that's his class certainly naked, worthy and that's your so point. fantastic and we yeah. get to see his chest so um huh. i'm gonna go with seven chicote and tuvok as my top three for the episode and it's off the stride yeah. <laughs> that's right that's their fantastic votes with a with a runner-up for janeway but those yeah. three you actually had a real tough episode to find three kind Still, of because like yeah. no one really does anything like it's just a yeah. lot of you know questions um and even Janeway, she does. Janeway would have gotten in that top three, except her gamble in like, let's prove that it's a dream is to go just basically commit suicide and yeah. see if she survives. That could have gone. Past, <laughs> right? There could have been other ways to do that, you know. Um, and sort of her pattern. Yeah, she's a little reckless at times, but that's why we love her. <laughs> but it was guaranteed um, to work. Yes, I mean, you know it was going to work. Yeah, yeah. If, yeah. if she's well, dead, and- it did work. Tuvok and Seven and even Neelix at this point have have kind of hinted that, oh, maybe we are still asleep. Maybe we're in this collective dream. And then she does it. And then they're like, oh, wait, how did you know we were in a dream? And I'm like, you guys just told her. We were just having this conversation. <laughs> it's so... <laughs> um, so yeah, it's a hard it's a hard one. It was a fun idea um, for an episode. It's just kind of silly. But that's, I, that's kind of times when Star Trek is best, when it has those little things where you can kind of just throw up your hands and go okay whatever we get what they were going for let's just have fun with it you know yeah, it's exactly. not the end of the world it's star trek it was a, it was a bit like a work meeting like this episode could have just been an email <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much it's a bit like call oh, me crazy it's a bit like what if suddenly all the young people in star trek all became borg all at once oh my gosh that, would never, that wouldn't happen would it no that would never happen no, no. Yeah. Yeah. i'm sorry i even thought of it yeah yeah silly idea well, that, that was sensational votes, as I said, with a, with a small pool to play from. You, you've done very well, Olivia. We'll, we'll go to the opposite <laughs> of that. And I think Jack might also have a bit of a challenge this week, just narrowing it down to three. But he's looking at the three most uh, irrational or upsetting characters for him this week. Yeah, I see. Oh, I thought I saw late night shins on popping in for a second. Nah, but, no. uh, so I'm going to agree with what Olivia said a moment ago about the doctor, I think he should have been a little more useful in this episode. I think it would have been useful for him to wake up multiple people, you know, instead of just (laughs) Sukote, for example. (laughs) Um, I also think that the person who's most experienced with uh, collective consciousnesses perhaps should have spoken up a little bit sooner. That would be seven of nine. Mm -hmm. And she should have been like sort of guiding them through this whole process. That's fair. And well, then, uh, and then, and then, lastly, there's our our buddy, the ensign, who 
I don't. What did he do this episode? Oh, he got beat up. That's what he did. That was his role <laughs> this episode. Poor Harry. And not Poor very well. Yeah. And he, he had a very unrealistic dream as well. Oh Ooh, my yeah. god. <laughs> it, it's just so nuts. And like, why? And I, I love Seven for the absurdity of the choice, but the just the like, oh, I'm gonna start a fight with Harry Kim. And yeah, yeah, it's the most absurd <laughs> fight. Why is it his fault? And why does this make sense? Why does she choose mm-hmm. to do this? It's so irrational and not Borg like at all. It's just so bizarre. I also um, like that out of everyone that she could have fought, she chose Harry. You know? uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, right? I've got to hit someone. Who am I going to hit? She chose Will. Right. <laughs> well, so, I, so it made maybe. me wonder. It made me oh, wonder ahead. if maybe they were sharing that dream, and she had been forced to do what he was imagining in that dream, and so that was her retaliation. I don't. I see, again, oh, I don't think so because she deep. she asked him to come join her in the Jeffrey's tubes once he woke up, although they were all still Thanks. asleep. Yeah. So yeah. it's hard to know, but like I could buy that. I could, or she <laughs> she had a, a a memory of it in going into yeah. the shared dream or something, and so she just knew she was angry at him for some reason. <laughs> right. If you um, got to punch on, you might as well punch on Harry. Yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it is a little uh, early glimmer into Picard's version of Seven, right? Because she's a bit is. more, has a bit more of that attitude and and um, Han Solo esque kind oh, of yeah, vibe is. about her. Yeah, so and the is. early glimmers of it there. Yeah, not doing it the Starfleet way, but doing it yeah. the, the Seven of Nine way. Oh, she exactly. throw the rule book out. Yeah, chuck the right. rule book out and just do it. You, it's, it's Dirty Harry in space. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Star Trek, Dirty Harry King. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Good mashup. Okay. So in that case, um in that case we get to the um we get to the Wharf Award, which in this episode is, shall we say, rather comprehensive. I did write us a, a, a list, but I don't feel like we ever got to know the name of the alien or the alien race. Am, am I right in that? Mm. Is it just alien? No, I think there's an hold on, I'm gonna cheat and look this up because sure. I might have been talking too much and not reading mm, the subtitles, but I think they were the handlehead tooth faces. Handlehead tooth faces. That's what, that's what that was. But oh I'll, I'll go through my list anyway and, and let you know who, who I spotted for for a fight. So we've got Chakotay mm. and the alien which was the first fight of the episode. Mm-hmm. Voyager fought the alien ship. Yes. We had Seven and Kim having a fight, and another crew member that we did didn't know got involved, tried to I think pull Kim off um, the fight. Yes. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm not going to go there. Yes, I am. Uh, we had Chikote fighting against sleep. <laughs> Did you say poke him off? Mm, <laughs> that's a good Thanks, one. Yeah. Thanks, we had the whole crew fighting sleep. Chikote fought the doctor, and Janeway got shot by the aliens. Did anyone? Did anyone fight the law in the law one? Not in this week's episode. But there are a lot of law <laughs> episodes of Star Trek, but this yeah. isn't one of them. Good. Just yeah. checking. No. Just checking. Yeah. Okay. So they're the fights this week. That's not bad. Mm. Yeah. We'll go back to the States. We've got Jack from Let's Talk About Treks keeping an eye out for the Mourn Hub medal this week. So there, there was a bit of romance but and, and a bit of uh, suggestive lack of costume in this episode, mm. but most of it was over before the opening credits, Jack. What, what did you what did you find? Yeah, yeah, it was all very kind of upfront because we, we, we have so the, uh, the seven <laughs> the whole seven Kim moment in the uh, in the jeffries area not really much of a tube if you're able to stand up in it but okay sure mm. it's the jeffries area i guess uh i feel jeffries like junction. sort of it's that the junction between the tubes i had it when mm. people I, yeah. I, I, I had it when people see my jeffries area <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> look out for jeffries area there's also uh there's a little bit i feel like that was sort of continued forward a little bit in the in the fight a little bit later like this is like yeah. a little undercurrent of like some uh so what do you call it um uh uh what do you call bdsm is that what you call it Ooh. yeah you call it you want to go the a little a little choking action later there's also uh there's also two box walking around in the nude yeah mm-hmm. uh and I don't, I, I really don't think I noticed anything besides that. I think that's I, it. Yeah, I think that's it. And I think, as I said, that all happened like within the first two minutes of the episode. Yeah. yeah. We could have done a really on. short podcast this week, listeners. There was probably other dreams that Harry had that they didn't put in the show. Oh, that would have been what? I mean, what? yeah, he was stuck asleep. Like they showed mm. him wake up, but then when, but then. 
they kind of sideline him. So they show him waking up screaming, but then they find him asleep. So he went back to sleep, and we don't yeah. know what he was dreaming about that whole time. And you can't tell me that right? he's, he's had a sexy dream with Seven in his Jeffrey's area. He's not going to just leave it at that, is he? Well, <laughs> something yeah, different. you're definitely going to want to jump back into that dream. Sure. Just quietly. Yeah. I sure. think for yeah. science. For the science. The unrealistic bit yes. is that's what his dream would be. His dream is for promotion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what he'd be dreaming about. I think he's changed his um. I think he's changed his aim just quietly. Maybe he's realised that that's futile. Yes, yes promotion is futile. Yeah, but yeah, but but uh, Jeffrey's areas are not. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to go it's, with the it's, Jeffrey's area forever yeah, now. It's, it's fun having you on the show. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah, good. All right. The I wasn't sure this one was going to come up this week, but Mister Hogan next to me here was on the lookout for any pets this week. Mm. And what, does does Harry Kim count as a pet? Oh. Not a good one. <laughs> they don't have to, we don't judge the quality of the pet. No, but obviously we've got the deer. And we're pretty sure it was a deer. Oh. Well, I don't know. If it, well, look, I'm not experienced in those type of things. If it was a wallaby, I would know that. True. Because I have a few around here. And it wasn't a wallaby. No, and it def- definitely wasn't a goat because my neighbour, Johnny down the road, has got goats. Johnny down the Is that his name? Johnny down the road? It's a funny last name. Yeah. 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 S- yeah. Such an Aussie name. Yeah. Do you know my son came home the other day from school and four, four of the goats followed him? Into our place, he goes to school with goats. It's usually a school, a school of fish, not a school of goats. How oh, you're hilarious! Yeah. No, no, he came up the driveway and there's four goats following him, and I'm going pissed his dickheads off. I don't want him in here. That's not mm. the way it works. Um, and I suppose so. We're giving it to a deer. Yeah, we're giving it to a deer, and we had to clean up the deer poo. Yeah, no, no, that's, got that's it. not a pet. That's a cleaner. Okay, right. Yeah, oh, sorry, the vacuum mate. cleaner. The vacuum cleaner guy from Statue Five. Yeah, yeah, good. Okay. Yeah. Um, and th- no, that that was it. That was it. That was it. Yeah. Yep. Easy job. Thanks, thanks, mate. Yeah, lovely job, Lee. Yeah. Now, I also had the two Vicks medal for any deaths this week. Mm. Now, it's debatable. Those frozen people in the, um, uh, what's it called? The, you know, where we eat. Mess hall. Oh, Thank yeah. Thank you, mate. Thanks for your help. Tell the dro- yeah, yeah. yeah. Mess hall. So th- they were dead, right? You not you don't get that frozen. They were dead. Yes, yeah. they yeah. were dead. They were dead because that was Janeway's, right? That Janeway's deep, deep, I mean, Janeway's dream is the darkest because it's her thinking about it. Right. The yeah. crew yeah. all dying under her her leadership. Getting real cold. Um, yeah, like she left the aircon. Yeah, well, you, you know, you, 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 that's one of our biggest fights, isn't it? Is you know, can we can we turn the heat down? Can we turn the heat up? Oh, fighting about the aircon at work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I tell you what. Oh, I tell you, the guys at work they like having it hot. I fucking hate that shit. Mm, I'm like, Honestly. turn it down. Yeah, yeah. Wankers. So we'll give. Even though they were in the dreams, they did die. So frozen crew members get a two Vicks medal. Does that count? Week. Certainly count. Oh, well, I, I, yeah. I bow to your superior yeah. whatever. Yeah. Now, I think the four of us would acknowledge this was a, an okay episode, but there was certainly room for improvement. I'm talking about the podcast and the episode of Star Trek. Yes, like, right. Maybe more people yeah. dying. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, my, my friend Andrew Hogan here, my learned, learned friend, oh. he, he looks at this to see how a source of separation would have improved this episode. I better have a chip then. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So put on your sa- safety belts. It's going to be a rough ride. All right. So... We've got we've got the ugly horn faced dudes, right? Sure. And they're all dudes. Me leaks. Which is weird. No, don't I'm telling the story. Oh, sorry. All right. Oh, I'm I'm not that interrupt. Okay. No, got it. All right. Yeah. Fucking I'll, I'll six shins on, on you. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That's next. He'll kick you in the balls. <laughs> right. So anyway, what happens is right, that it would be very easy to confuse a bunch of knobbers who sleep all the time mm-hmm. because what they could do is they could separate the the not saucer. Because it's Voyager. Yep. It's not a saucer. It's an upside down soup ladle that you get at a Korean restaurant. Okay. For eating the right. yeah. yeah. It's exactly like that. Yeah. Right? And they separate that. And the guys who are asleep, the ugly horn faces, they don't realize that there's another part of the ship hanging around with these two nacelles that can go up and down like that. Yep. The and fins. They're the fins. Yep. They're the fins. Yeah. yeah. Tango and Cash. <laughs> That's their names. The nacelles on the Voyager are called Tango and Cash. And um, so then what they do is they fool them into thinking that the source is the whole ship. And then they go on there and then they realize that there's nobody on the saucer, which makes them think that they must still be dreaming. Oh, you see, mm-hmm. because they're fooled, but it's just that everybody's partying in the engineering section on the other oh, bit. And then, the they, part. and then they fire off a few of the, um, the uh, unlimited photon torpedoes mm-hmm. and blow those guys up. Because you know what? They're really annoying. Yeah, so annoying. Yeah, we don't want to see them again. No, just get us to more Borg episodes Thank or even you. Species Eight Four Seven Two. Yeah, we don't exactly. want to see this race again. I don't want to see them again. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, that's what would have been. That's what would have been really good. Thank you, mate. All right, yeah. and I would have made the nacelles have to go up and down like 
like flapping, mm. like continuously, yeah, continuously up yeah. and down yeah. when they're at war, because oh. yeah. they would look yeah. funny and it would and it would be really hard for the visual effects guys. It would I, piss them off. I found that a little bit hard to follow, but I might be asleep at the moment. Ah, right. Yeah. Oh, I'm definitely asleep. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Right. I think our listeners are too. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> that's what I got for you. Thank you. Right. And it wouldn't be an episode of Unplanned Trek oh. without arguably our most uh, sought after. Special guest? Yeah, it's about fucking time you got me on, you dickhead. Right. Who's my name's Shinzon. To? My name's Shinzon, and I'm going to talk to... Can I talk to this dumbass over here? You talked to him last week. Did I? Yeah. Well, <laughs> hello, I'm Shinzon. What's your name? I don't know. What's my name? Donatello. Donatello. <laughs> yeah? What do you fucking do? <laughs> I'm a ninja Is that, is that ninja Donatello in a Star Trek uniform? That is fantastic. Hey, I'm asking the questions, lady. All right? <laughs> Are you Donatello in a bloody Star Trek uniform? Um, yes, I am. Well, you look like a fucking idiot, wanker. What do you do? I'm a ninja turtle. I know. You, you, you said that before, goose. God, you're boring. Go away. Oh, jeez. Yeah, oh, head... nice. We got the Cisco action out. Oh, I'll headbutt someone else too if you don't shut up. Especially with... I have the oh. Morn Playmates figurine, but it's downstairs somewhere. You've got a Morn? Yeah. Wow. Morn was I uh, Morn is my like I love I love him. Does he so does much. he have a string at the back and when you pull it he doesn't talk? <laughs> no, I wish that'd be fantastic. That would be That would be genuine. That would be a great gag. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. Reminds me of some stuff. Make it. Um, make it happen. If if you come on again in the future and I can understand if the answer is no, but <laughs> feel free to bring him on to the show with, with you. Uh, I thought I thought, I thought was pretty calm today. That that was pretty reserved, but he, yeah, him, yeah, he he might have been a bit nervous. Oh, probably. Yeah. Except he's been on Star Trek before. He has. Yeah. 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 Only on one. Though. He's been on Star Trek. Libby's been on Star Trek. Have you been on Star Trek? No. Um, I've been. I've lost the Trek Spurts quiz. Yeah. That's something you haven't done. Good point. Yeah, it's something Jack hasn't done either. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um, that was good. That well was done, good. Shins. I thought Shins was okay. Yeah. Well, that wraps up where we are this week no for this way. episode of Fifty Shades of Trek. We're doing one week at a time. They will get sexier as we go. Oh dear. Like we're just in the forties at the moment. Yeah. So are you? Are you? What's the order structure that you're doing here? Because if you did we're, Enterprise, we're camp- now you're doing Voyager. So are you jumping around? Are you ranking yeah. them? Did you pick them by what you thought were the sexiest episodes, and you're counting down? Mm. Yeah. So it's more. Yeah, I guess it is a countdown, isn't it? Yeah, it we, is. we, we'll end up with the the most sexiest at the end. The only provision oh. I had is I wanted something from each franchise, which made it really hard because. Prodigy isn't that sexy. <laughs> you would hope. Yeah. Well, that one was made for children. So yeah, that's right. Like very specifically for children. Mm. So but I there really is a bit of Chakotay, be... um, Janeway vibes in that. And there's also a oh, hand holding, which is yeah. pretty much. Yeah, there that, is. That's, that's the equivalent that's of, right. of a Riker Yeah, because in... I'm like, I can think of other episodes of Voyager that have way more going on than this one did. Yeah, and they're, they're on the list. Yeah, there's, okay. there's, a, there's a few more Voyager coming, but. Um, yeah, I've got representation from from each franchise, and the list is actually very next generation heavy. There's a mm, lot of surprising next, next gen coming. We, we well, you got those in, deep Vs and all of that right. stuff. You know, that's uh, yeah, that's right. What's you the Picard that. waking up and Q's in bed with him? Like, come on. Oh yeah, yeah. on and, Risa. Yeah, and, and just come don't on. forget Be- Beverly. That's Beverly. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of but oh. even like. You know, that's why I'm just like, there's so many other Voyager episodes, so I feel like I'm like, okay, you know, six (laughs) six candles gonna happen. Uh, yes, 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 there there will be at least one episode with six, but you always know it's a good day when you wake up and John Delancey's just sitting lying in bed beside you. That's right, Mm -hmm. what what did I do to deserve this? Yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah, unless you're Picard. And you're like, he gets a bit of he, he hates Q. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And of- does he? Nah. Q mm. keeps coming. They've got a they've got a little toxic relationship thing going on there, I think. Yeah. There's an episode where they oh. refer to Picard. I think Data says he's, he treats you like a pet. And that that's a really good way of looking at it. Mm. Yeah. It makes sense, yeah. And, mm. and and you know, d- there's a lot of data in Star Trek Next Generation. Oh. You know, yeah. like he he's a mourn hubber. Picard gets yeah. a bit of Aussie action. He does with yep. Wendy, mm-hmm. with Wendy Hughes. Yep, yeah. playing yeah. the piano, playing the piano in in a Jeffrey's, Jeffrey's tube. tube. Yes. <laughs> There's that horrible episode of Voyager because I just don't like it. But the one where Harry Kim finds, you know, has the the planet of women. Oh yeah, they're all so. trying to reproduce with him. Yeah, that yeah, one. seemed very unrealistic. <laughs> I was going to say which part, but all of it, yeah. all of it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 
Uh, well, th thanks very much for coming on. Olivia, do you have um, any news of anything you're working on or or that, that's coming up for you that you'd like to um, let us know about? I have some live shows in LA, but other than that, not a not a ton currently. You know, we yeah. had this little strike recently. Yes, um, yeah. So things are starting to open back up slowly. Um, I am, you know, I'm performing for a Maui benefit show um, in a little over a week here in LA that's more of uh, the circus stuff that I do oh we but, should go um... a week was last week for us oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. you gotta get you, know, you gotta get the TARDIS out of the shop yeah. and then I've got a TARDIS already. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go yeah um but yeah that's about it for me right now well keep us in the loop if anything comes up we'd be announce... very happy to share it with it with our guys yeah, yeah. I mean because yeah. we will make you more famous than you already are <laughs> like, it's scary that that could be possible but it it, does, it, it works yeah Impossible. yeah i'm just trying to think we, we do have one belgium listener i'm just thinking that that, mm. that could help oh you've got oh. an international yeah true oh. yeah about 80 yeah, percent yeah, yeah. of our listeners are either in america or here yeah mm. but oh, that's that's, that's how it rolls at the moment we, but there's one belgium guy that listens each week well, yeah. I found out recently that I'm Luxembourgish, so maybe we can do that, Mark. You're Luxembourgish. Yeah. I thought Luxembourgish. you were a bit Luxembourgish. Hmm. Do you mean ancestry or? Yeah, I mean, no, I've I family stuff. Um, but yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't. I've never met anybody who's Luxembourgish. No, it's I double just... There you go. Double landlocked. Yeah, it's like like that... yeah, yeah, it's the little one between France and Germany. It's got no beach. So it's not surrounded by any water and the countries around it aren't surrounded by any water. There's two countries Jeez. in the world that do that. I think I might be thinking Liechtenstein rather than Luxembourg. There's no one surfing there, yeah. is it? No. No. No, they, they, they don't go to the Olympics. They don't surf. No, we're not the water events. Charlie, don't surf. Thanks, mate. Right. Okay. Right. And, anyway. and Jack, what, Jack, what are you guys working on in Let's Talk About Treks at the moment? Well, since we are between uh, newly airing episodes of Star Trek, we have gone back to fill in some gaps. Although we already did uh, Star Trek Picard Season 3 all the way through, we're currently finishing up. Uh, we're on our second half of the first season of Star Trek Picard uh, until uh, some new Star Trek comes out. We're going to probably stick on Picard until then. So we haven't done Season 2 either, so we'll probably do that in some gap other times. Stuff and then, of course, we have. Really good. <laughs> yeah. It was, it, and then again, we have several, uh, several of our Patreon shows coming out as well that we that we planned out a few. So that's what oh. we're doing over at Let's Talk About Treks. Nice. Thank you, Jay. Yes, Olivia. I, you know, I should plug. Um, it just occurred to me. I have, I do have a. A D and D stream um, oh, oh, that yeah. airs pretty regularly. We do. I'm in two games right now, so we have a, a Friday horror game that's almost every Friday night here in the, mm -hmm. in the U.S. Starts so, so you can watch it at 7:30 p.m. Pacific. Um, I don't know what that translates into in other time zones, but I'm sure people are clever enough to figure that out. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we also have our Strange Lore podcast, which has become kind of just a 1940s office drama um like it, it was it was actually kind of a star trek -y vibe but we were switching back and forth between this 1920s sci-fi storyline and on a different planet and then office workers in a science fiction like periodical office in the 40s but we've kind of just been hanging out in the cool. 40s for a while um and that's every other sunday evening so it will be playing again tomorrow night presuming in the 1940s office you're not coming across a lot of trolls or dragons no, just really evil exes. Um, oh, well, we've all got them. We... <laughs> so a form of a troll, actually. Yeah, thank you very much. I could, I could um, have a whole game to myself. But yeah, that's that's on Long Lost Lore on Twitch. I'll send over the info so you can, oh, you can have yeah. it. Now, have you seen, yeah. Olivia, have, have you seen Todd Stashwick's D&D Dungeon? Oh, I haven't seen it myself, but I have seen oh. it in all the photos and things. It looks fantastic. Um, it's that that is just next level. That is really yeah. it's, ridiculous. It's, yeah, no, it looks truly impressive. So yeah. Oh well, I, see, that would be my aim. Just, yeah. Just, just just to go down there and go. Oh my god. Yeah. Look how nerdy I am. <laughs> and then leave. Yeah. And then leave <laughs> because I fancy someone nerdy. <laughs> um, oh. Olivia, if you've got links for those, um, send them through, and I'll, I'll put yeah. it. In. Yeah. I'll send you. them along. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you both for being part of this today. This has been a lot of fun. 
Um, we'll be back next week with another one on the Fifty Shades of Trek project. We might be doing a next generation next week. Okay. Yeah. Right here then. Yeah, mm. one of those sexy well, next generation. You, you choose all that. I don't That's care. That's right. I, I, do the I couldn't care less. <laughs> Thank you, mate. It's a Wesley episode, right? Those are the sexiest. Oh, with yeah, the, that running around the planet and and then he should have been killed. Stepping on flowers. <laughs> yeah. 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 Punishment. Yeah. 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 No, hang on. Didn't he? Um, who was the... Who was the? He had a love interest in one episode. Robin. Robin. Yeah, which was Robin um, yeah. yeah, played by um. Oh gosh. Naomi. Uh, Ashley Judd. Ashley Judd. Ashley Ashley Judd. There you go. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. It's a good effort. Yeah. 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 I think I asked. Not a bad choice. Once. Yeah. You could do a lot worse than Ashley Judd. I know. Oh no doubt. A lot worse. I, I, I suggested once to Will Wheaton that that episode was to compensate for the really ugly jumpers they made him wear every episode. <laughs> okay, you can wear this fucking ugly jumper, but you can also kiss ass and jump. Yeah. Yeah. I'd, be, I'd, I'd be cool with that. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's been fantastic fun. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much for making time for us, guys. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. This was fun. Yeah. Thank cool. you. Yeah, appreciate it. I will stop the recording. Is that okay? No, we'll leave no. it because we've got to do it. One yeah. minute. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Well, this has been fantastic. Yeah. And yeah. Olivia, thank you very much. Yeah, no, thank you guys. So this was fun. Uh, I like the premise. It's a it's a good, fun, silly thing to do. I think it's it is fun very, fun. very silly. <laughs> you know, I, I, Trek is great when it's like these deep, you know, interesting philosophical questions that it asks, but it's also fun when it's just so silly. And I think that the silliness is usually the best when they play it so straight, but it's Absolutely. just so goofy. And that's, yeah. I love that. So true, so true. We're um we're hoping and look um make sure that you follow um late night chins on on Twitter. 